It's Infinity Rewatch. It's Wednesday nights, I think. Unless you're listening to this on another day of the week. We're not going to judge you if you do that. As long as you're not watching on a Tuesday, like some kind of weirdo. Then we've got a problem. Then we're going to have to have a Mm -hmm. chat. I'm Andrew. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ryan J. Whitehead. And that's right, Trans Siberian Orchestra. We're coming for you. We're the new Christmas choir in town. That's it. That is it. Oh, man. What? Okay. So let's deep dive right into it. Uh, actually, no, wait, first, I, there is one thing I'd like to talk about before we get into the episode. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna stop right there. And we're gonna, we're gonna harken back to a, uh, to a wonderful ind- individual named Jonathan E. Davis. Ah, yes. Jonathan E. Davis sent out a message to our Twitters, which I told you, Twitters is the way to do it, man. See, people talk on Twitter. It's the way it goes. Uh, and has requested to get another rewatch of No Way Home after we've seen it again. I have now seen the movie twice uh, oh, since okay. since we recorded, and it was quite a mission to get it recorded. I'm not going to lie, uh, but we <laughs> did it. We did it, and there's some real genuine feels at that time, minus some technical difficulties as well. Um, but you know, uh, Jonathan, you have my vote yes on doing another shot. Another crack at uh, recording that bad boy. So uh, Fantasia and I, I don't know. Fantasia is also, it's his show. So it's his vote as well. But I, I definitely vote yes on that. Uh, how are you feeling, bro? I am throwing in a second yes to this vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jonathan Davis, that, that is a good call, Jonathan. And um, I mean, I feel like every time, uh, every time we've covered one of the movies this year, like one of the movies that have come out that we're not rewatching that we're seeing for the first time. Every time I finish an episode of, of recording that with you, Ryan, I always sit and I think of what I brought up and I'm always like, Oh, I missed at least one or two good things that I I wish I would have brought up. Mm. Uh, And that's a very full movie. Uh, That was the third longest MCU movie ever. So there's a lot in there to go over. Of course we should look at that again uh so we will right. we will sometimes see we have a nice big as far as we know a nice big gulf of time between <laughs> january and may so yeah. there there's something's happening there that's true uh and also i i want to challenge i'm requesting a challenge on mr jonathan e davis who i love uses his full name as well as myself you know we it's rare that i come come across another individual who uses their middle initial as part of their name so i'm pretty proud of that myself um but uh i challenge you uh to bring us forward some of your discussion points for us to bounce off of and i challenge that to anyone who else anyone else who listens to this go on our twitter page tag us your discussion points or personally message us so we don't spoil anything for people who have not had the chance to see it um, as I hear that uh, things are getting a little sketchy out there and not everyone's going to be able to go. But um, but yeah, send us a message and send us your discussion points because I've already talked to a couple people about this and everyone's got a good, good different view on it now. So I am curious, but send us discussion points and I want to I want to open them up a little bit and, and, and bring out some points as well. So. so what Ryan is saying is he is making you guys all Dr. Octopus, he's putting the power of the show mm-hmm. in the palm of your hand. So take it, run with it, do some great things. We'll see you in Sweden, Otto, etc. cetera. Yeah. All right. Sounds mm-hmm. good. Sounds like a plan. I'm excited to hear what people bring up. Uh, I know there's one big thing that I forgot to bring up and I thought of it when I was driving home from your place. So I'll remember to bring it up when we record that episode because it was a question I wanted to ask you because your knowledge of Marvel lore probably had an answer. Ooh, yeah. Probably. Probably. Um, but yeah. Whew. But let's talk about Hawkeye. Uh, well, that episode, I got to say, right out of the gate, it gave me everything I wanted out of that last episode. Literally. There was not anything missed. Everything was given to me. Except for one thing, actually, I should say. But it's it's being greedy. I would say, like, I could walk away with this and be happy, but this is me being greedy. 
and we'll get to that at the end. It, it, it has to do with an end credit. I was very happy about the musical number, but I wanted a kingpin end credit uh, for very specific reasons, which we'll get into as we talk about the whole episode. But I got to say, this episode, we knew what we were getting into. All the chess pieces are in place. It's time to get this show rolling. Let's get the action going. And man, did it take off and deliver. Well, we went into this episode the whole week just with this thought of like, do they have enough time? Even though it's an hour long, do they have enough time to cover all their bases? Because yeah. we still had to deal with the watch. We had to deal with um, the swordsman. We obviously had to deal with Kingpin and Echo and Kazi and what's going to happen with them and Kate and a Hawkeye situation. And is Hawkeye going to see his family? Like, there was so much to do. And Yellen is in the mix. I, I could not fathom how they were going to handle that in less than an hour but mm. the trick was the answer is that they just hit that ground running like the flash who's also mm-hmm. a marvel character now spoilers kevin feige just announced flash uh... 2 <laughs> flash oh testing. god no 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 it's I'm happening not even gonna, i'm not even gonna entertain this joke and then <laughs> there's a cro- there's a crossover called the flash tastic 4 where they oh run. god yeah. just stop just stop <laughs> um and and let's stop there and start with of course the the big topic that we all wanted right out of the gate was the big man himself mr wilson fisk the kingpin making his mcu debut and you know what this day started for me uh this day started for me waking up because we're currently cat sitting uh, a cat named after Arya Stark, and so his cat's name is Arya. Ooh. And the cat decided to... I The cat will only feel comfortable if we leave it a box. So we left it a box, and I decided, I'm like, hey, if we want to just keep track of this cat, let's put the box in the bedroom, which is the worst idea I think I've ever had. And the cat would, like, decide it at, like, a good six-ish in the morning to start scratching at the box and, like, pick at it. So it was just like, oh, you're mm-hmm. just like... <laughs> And it was like it was just like a really irritating noise. So I was awake, and I went to my like, Twitter. Does this cat uh, emulate Arya Stark in that you know it'll uh, she'll she'll have like a different <laughs> human face, and then you'd be like, "Who's this? Oh my god, who's this human in my apartment? What, what can I help you with something, <laughs> sir?" And then the cat's like, "Oh no, it's just me." Uh, <laughs> the cat, the cat, and I came to an accord uh, in its early stages of me babysitting it with uh, Isabella. Uh, which was, I don't bother you, you don't bother me, and we'll live, uh, we'll live uh, simpatico. Yeah, and and it worked. I mean, for uh, we had to cat sit for thirty something hours. We're into our final stretch here, but that cat spent a good, I don't know, ten hours in a closet. So I'd say we did it. We did. I didn't. I didn't force the cat in the closet. The cat chose to stay in the closet. Um, so that was our that was our time. But anyway. Long story short, I uh, woke up to a wonderful Twitter notification that Vincent D'Onofrio has left a message uh, with a Merry Fiskmas, Fiskmas, uh, a message. Fiskmas. And he comes on, and being the humble and generous actor that he is, he comes on, he thanks the crew, thanks all the fans for being patient and, and being so excited about his character. And it was really nice. And that's when shortly after I texted you to make sure that you were awake at seven ish in the morning to watch the show. Cause we want to watch it as soon as possible. Yes. As early as I love getting an early start to the day. So mm-hmm. that is always whenever there's a Disney plus show, that's always, it's an extra bonus. I got a longer day. Um, I, I think one thing that I want to bring up here that we should bring up is when you and I came back to your place after Spider-Man No Way Home, yes, and uh, we started setting up to record that episode, Isabella is lying on the couch watching Law & Order Special Victims Unit or Criminal uh, yeah, Intent. Uh, criminal uh, criminal intent, intent. intent, yeah. Criminal with intent. D'Onofrio. And it's just, uh, you know, the scene that we walk in on is D'Onofrio just being a boss and doing his thing, whatever it is he does on that show, I'm assuming he is on the side of order and maybe law sometimes, you know, he's not, he's not a criminal. Um, Mm. So 
D'Onofrio was just present that night, even though he didn't show up in Spider-Man. Uh, and it just got me all the more psyched for this week. And doesn't the first shot of this episode start with that cane and him walking into that little office? I don't know what this place is where Vera Farmiga is meeting him, but I don't care because he has, Ryan, a diamond top cane and purple pants. It is perfect Fisk. Hashtag perfect Fisk. Long live the king. He's on my screen. He's interacting with her. I, I, that's him. And, and he's got a little eye twitch going on because he's crazy. That was perfect Fisk. It, it was a perfect Fisk. And, you know, I had a small moment uh, when we were watching it uh, together. You know, it's always fun to do that in the morning with you. Just like they message each other. We sync up three, two, one, go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was awesome watching it with you in the sense of like, yeah, hearing the big steps. And didn't I say it in the past podcast? Wouldn't it have been awesome if we saw that in the fifth episode, have that just, just that kind of just before he like maybe says, hello, Eleanor, just like leave it right there, leave it right there and then pick up the conversation in the next episode. I think everyone would have, everyone would have clipped that everyone would have thrown it in social and Mm -hmm. everyone would have been happy. But you know what? In the end, it still worked because it was a great way to start the episode with the thunderous steps of, of the man himself, the Kingpin. Um, and, and you know what, it's, it's kind of, it kind of felt like, you know, D'Onofrio being the amazing actor that he is. I mean, you know, you look at men in black, you look at law and order, you look at, uh, man, uh, the one where he played, uh, uh what's his name? Played a historic figure, Citizen Kane, Orson Welles. He played Orson Welles. Um, I think it was Orson Welles. Um, but yeah, he played, he, again, this band's an incredible talent. Um, and even Jurassic, Jurassic world, uh, offering such talent. Oh there. yeah. I forgot he was in Jurassic world. <laughs> I mean, the man's a chameleon, uh, but you know, gotta, gotta give him respect for like not missing a beat in this scene. Like, honestly, like if you go from daredevil season three to this episode, literally the same character traits are all there. And at first, it was kind of for me. It was just like I'm watching. My brain was like I'm watching Kingpin, and he's in the MCU now, like fully and officially. And it's kind of a weird. There's a weird moment where I'm like, "Is this fitting? Is this working?" And then it just faded so fast. Like it just like I'm just like I, I have Kingpin. Like this is the comic books are just thrive. The comic book life is now thriving in the MCU and. Uh, and yeah, like you're you're right. The twitches, the dialogue. He still got the kind of same, uh, he still got the same kind of rhythm to his voice, you know. And he's just like, we both profited, so you know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I'm a little confused as to where this is going. Like it's it's so perfect. And you know, one thing I like about his Law and Order character, you know, com- comparing it to this one, is the both characters get under your skin in a really classy way. Um, you know. One of the things the Law and Order character gives you is he's a very cultured individual. Like any reference you drop, he'll know, you know, the historic background of it and, and, it's, and its cultural relevance. And Kingpin's very much the same way. He gets under your skin, uh, you know, having this incredible knowledge and understanding of the way the world works. And, and he exploits it to gain his advantage. So it's always a win-win for him. Because like you think about it, Think about it with Eleanor. He even says, like, we both profit and you profit just as much, if not more. And so why would you want to walk away from that? And and it's so good. It's uh, it's great. It, it literally, literally, it just picks up right where it left off. And the character is just thriving in this new playground. You know, it's funny, too. You mentioned how there's a little moment of, is this going to work? Is this going to work in the MCU? And then it works. Uh, I had a little moment like that, sort of, um, right off the top when, uh, or not right off the top, but when he's talking to Kazi, mm-hmm. um, his second scene where he's talking to Kazi, because he does something. Uh, I'm going to drop a spoiler for No Way Home. So if you haven't watched No Way Home yet. You've you been know, warned. You've been warned. You've been warned. You're being warned right now. Fast forward like 30 <laughs> seconds from now. But remember I brought up in no way home, how crazy surreal it was to hear Mm. Tobey Maguire say the word Avengers. 
it was just it blew my mind right um now in this oh, avengers what's that <laughs> yeah it's just like i can't believe that came out of his mouth yeah the same thing happens here kingpin says he's talking about hawkeye and he's like there's an avenger messing up my my plans and as far as i can remember nobody in any of the netflix shows ever uttered the words avenger uh they didn't even say their names they were just like the green guy um because ike perlmutter is afraid of connectivity uh but uh <laughs> so so to hear kingpin say avenger made it real uh and it it just gave it a level of uh, I don't know. It, it created this sort of image in my head of like, this guy has been fed up with the Avengers since the day they came onto the scene. And I, I want to know everything he's been doing. What has he been doing, Ryan, this whole time he's been living in New York, doing evil stuff. The Avengers have been maybe thwarting him. Hawkeye knows about him. Does Spider-Man know about him? Does he know about Spider-Man? If I had heard D'Onofrio say today, like Avengers are this and that, and then there's this Spider-Man guy. I would have lost my mind. Uh, so I want to fill in those blanks. And I'm curious whether or not the Echo Show is going to do that for me. Uh, I'm curious if that's going to be the kind of show that looks backward rather than forward in the way, say, the Black Widow movie did. I don't know. But I'm going to chew on this piece of candy cane while I think about it. And uh, <laughs> while you tell me what you think. Uh, Fisk has been doing this whole time. I, I think he has cemented himself in his network. I, I mean, you know, you look at, you know, I, I like to base my character references mostly off of media representation. Why? Because media representation has little time to build a character. So they're literally going to find the best traits of the said character and, and develop it as much as they can within the time frame they're given. Um, and you know, to refer back to the Spider-Man nineties cartoon, this is a guy who will, was put in prison. And then at the same time, um, erased his identity and then created a new one and built a criminal empire by uniting factions and literally becoming the kingpin. Um, so this character in the MCU with things going on, like, you know, the Battle of New York, and also just on top of that, just Avengers battles, um, you know, heroes being, um, uh, heroes being criminalized, all this stuff. I would say this guy is doing exactly that. Heroes being criminalized. He, on the other hand, is amassing his, his identity as the kingpin. So, you know, he gets, he gets all the, all the troops under his thing. And you have to understand is like in this world, in the MCU, uh, we haven't seen a lot of street level action, to be honest with you, because Iron Man dealt with problems within his company. Uh, and, you know, you have the Ten Rings being being the major supplier there. So you could argue that the Ten Rings may have something to do with Kingpin down the road. And I think that story could be played out. Um, we'll have to talk about that, though. Do I think... Echo is going to look backwards? I don't think so because we got a, a, a you know for some for for someone who said that they don't like doing origin stories anymore, uh Feige I don't think is going to waste time focusing too much on storytelling. Uh or, or sorry, like kind of reflecting in a character because I think Hawkeye they gave you everything you need to know about Echo within two episodes, like literally. And it was like just enough scenes. Like it was, I'd say a half an hour worth of content to give her, give you that backstory to get her going. I think I in this, I think in her show, uh, the way I want it to play out, I think, I think that Kingpin will be the main, main villain of the story. How is going to be the big question. Um, and, and if he is the villain is going to be a big question. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this episode definitely leaves a lot to be discussed, but, uh, but to kind of bookmark it right now, it's, I would say echo is, I'd say echo show is going to be really good. If they, uh, if they go the way I think they're going, because, I had a talk with a, a fellow uh, 
a fellow comic book lover uh, and, and, and encyclopedia of Marvel knowledge, and uh, i.e. my brother. And he said that Echo has a lot to do with Daredevil. Um, there's actually some really good storylines with Daredevil. So uh, that being said, with uh, you know uh, Kingpin being in it, and spoilers, you're being warned once again. If you are listening to this message, you need to stop and watch Spider-Man No Way Home before I continue any further. Um, you've been warned. Okay. Uh, but Daredevil now being in the MCU as well, are those two players going to play a big role in Echo? Right. And I think it makes sense. That's a good place to throw Charlie Cox. It's a good place to have him fit in right. there. He fits mm-hmm. with the world. Um, I'd be lying if I said I was fine with seeing another Daredevil Kingpin story because I would much rather see a Spider-Man Kingpin story. But just any Kingpin is good Kingpin, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to take a minute, Ryan, to talk about his costume. Oh, yes. um, First of all, thank you so much, Wardrobe Department of Hawkeye, for putting him in white. Right? Thank you. Don't waste time with the black. We wasted a whole season with black. We're good. Mm -hmm. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much for putting him in white. Now, I found it really interesting because you have his introductory costume, which for me is like 98% exactly what all he's missing for me was a pink tie that, or like a pink neckerchief or something. But other than that, with the purple pants and the cane and the jacket, I'm like, there he is. There he is. Uh, And then in the second scene, we get a very uh, different and yet still somehow the same costume change. We keep the white jacket. We trade the purple pants for white ones, meaning it is before Labor Day, but it's not because it's Christmas. So he is breaking all the rules. Um, And then he's got a red and white Hawaiian shirt underneath that jacket. I thought that was a really bold costume choice there. Um, Do you think there was some kind of what was going on there? Where did somebody draw a line and say, let's put him in on a Hawaiian shirt? What what do you think was going through their head? I, you know. I was I thought it was the weirdest choice honestly it was it was really out of left field especially for a character who who emulates such class like he he's a very classy man um so for him to wear a Hawaiian shirt either tells me he was planning to leave and go somewhere or or he's disguising himself one or the other which is weird because this guy is a guy who can walk both worlds as uh-huh. they say, um, and and because like on one side of the coin, he's this philanthropist that's well respected within communities, and then on the other hand, he's a criminal mastermind. So I, it's, it was a weird choice at first, at first, but then there were clues that kind of came into play later on. So we'll but we'll get to that as we go. But I loved his relationship with Echo because it demonstrated again that extra layer of how cultured he is. Like he he tries to do the the sign language when he knows like certain expressions and and what to say. So seeing that was just icing on the cake of relationship building for me. Like it just demonstrates how long he's been in the scene as a character, um, you know, and and as a character, and it speaks volumes to his relationship with Echo. Not only from that one shot we had in like episode three where he like touches her cheek. As, as a kid, but it just shows his commitment to her as a character. Yeah, they had only two scenes together and they were both brief, but they were both very telling, weren't they? Mm-hmm. They both spoke a lot of volumes. And it, the one of the things we were wondering about this Kingpin was, was he going to be different from the one from the Daredevil show? And if so, how different? And I think what's interesting here is this relationship is something that, I don't think the Netflix Kingpin would have had. I don't see the Netflix Kingpin adopting a kid, taking a Mm -hmm. kid under his wing. Uh, Because remember, it was a big deal for him to start a romance. He meets Vanessa and that's like, it's awkward for him. And he's like, I I don't want to embarrass myself, right? Like he's, he's not really playing with a full social deck. So... I think that this is a different kingpin in regards to, you know, what he's willing to do. Uh, so the whole time I'm watching his relationship with Echo 
And I'm wondering, especially in that first scene of them together, how much is sincere and how much is Big Willie Fisk doing what Big Willie Fisk do? Because Big Willie Fisk got to get stuff done. So, you know, he's learning sign. He's saying, I love you. Um, but he is also telling Kazi, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And if she's a loose end, then that's what she is. So I'm I'm fascinated by what is genuine in Wilson Fisk, if any, or is he, as the Grinch song said last week, the king of sinful sots, uh, a three-decker sauerkraut told still sandwich with arsenic sauce. Well, I don't know what he is, and I want to find out. So that's why I am, uh, like, not to jump ahead too far to the ending here, but that's why I am positive that that ending is not what it appears to be. Because there's so much untapped potential in this man. Oh my god! To squander well, on this, <laughs> I I don't know. It's okay, I think we should just because we're we keep drawing to the same conclusion here. So I think it's best we kind of exercise it a little bit, and then mm-hmm. and then we'll get to it. We'll close it off a little bit later. So we get to fast forward all, all through this epic fight scene at the Plaza Hotel and everything. And it's super fun. And it's everything. Well, I don't, to don't let New Yorkers hear you say that because that's the Rockefeller Center, sir. Oh, sorry. Rockefeller. Yeah, that's Rockefeller. several blocks uh, south of the Plaza Hotel. Well, there you go. So I'm, I'm so sorry, uh, New Yorkers who may listen to this. I've only been to New York twice, I think. Yeah, so I've, I've only been to New York twice. So my understanding of the uh, the urban uh, city, uh, the urban you know layout, it's a bit alien to me. But actually, uh, I think sorry, car- carry on. I'm just going to search for something while you're talking because I think there may have been a really funny Easter egg in here. If I'm okay. thinking it's right, but, but uh, carry on. Go ahead with what so, you're saying. So so there's this epic fight scene, and Echo ends up catching up with Kingpin after. And, and what I would say is one of the most intense fights with Kingpin, but it was good to see him actually move around the way he did uh, because mm. I loved seeing how comic book it was, you know, big, large movements that would send the character flying. And I was, I was shocked when he got hit by a car, but I realized that car was parked at the side of the street. So to generate as much m- generate as much acceleration as it did i don't think he would have gotten hit as badly as it looked it looked really bad but it looked like he was fine there but anyway so the when when echo catches up with kingpin um and the last scene we see of him she points a gun at him and he says like don't do it i love you you know i care about you a lot and you hear two sounds you hear a gunshot so you hear like a bang but you don't hear a thud you hear a boom like a kind of like hitting a trash can or or something like like metal but what's weird is that if he was dead wouldn't it been more of a thud it's i've listened to it about three or four times trying to distinctly understand the sound that's being made but it's not two gunshots it's not two shots it's one bang and with a flash and the second one's a boom with no flash. So Hmm. I don't know. Now they also foreshadow something, if you want to call it foreshadowing, is when he gets shot with the arrow, everyone has this kind of, even the way it's shot, is there's kind of a gas moment of like, (gasps) like he got hit by an arrow. Clearly he's gonna, you know, he's down for the count now. But you realize it's kind of like body armor. I think he's wearing body armor. Yeah, that makes sense. and it, it it's kind of like it's kind of like they're foreshadowing something. So either either uh, the director uh, the director or the creators of the show is trusting that the audience is smart enough to draw that conclusion, or that they just literally are trying to just leaving this as like a very flexible ending. Like, hey, you know what? We are done with Kingpin. This was a great like one off thing. He's dead. But why wouldn't they show him, like, why wouldn't they do the classic Disney thing where you hear the bang and you go back and he's lying on the ground? Well, for a few reasons here. First of all, I think that if their plan was to have Kingpin just be a one-off just for Hawkeye. A one and done. 
then they wouldn't have waited till episode six of six to throw him in. Um, you don't yeah, waste Sinofrio. Um, I, I, I will, I'll classify that as one point as like towards like why he would still be alive, but mm-hmm. it's still a weak one because you could easily write it off. Like that's like, I could just the same argue that you could write that off and say he's dead. You could, but then if that's the case, they have given more screen time to Reese Ifan's version of the lizard than they did to Kingpin, and that makes no sense to me. True, um, true. Hey, I'm I'm people. I I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you guys right there. I'm gonna stop you, Fantasia, right there, and stop everyone for a moment. I want him to be alive. Yes, but with with the expectations of MCU and the amount of storytelling they have to do going forward, and considering the record of villains lifespan in mcu for some reason inside my body something's telling me that like why would they show that if he's dead like (laughs) like you know so Mm -hmm. i i don't know i'm i i want to be convinced i that's what i want i want to be convinced that they're going to continue doing something with him i was hoping for an end credit shot i was hoping for something that would be like don't worry we'll see him again (laughs) <laughs> excuse me bless you i was hoping for the same and the fact that we didn't get it was was a little bit frustrating even though that's a great musical number it's but so the, good the second point is we still have she hulk we still have miss marvel we still have moon knight we assumedly might have daredevil stories in echo we don't know but we do still have echo um and to not put him in there would make for, I think, a pretty boring show if it's just going to be her and then maybe she bumps into Daredevil or something. Uh, there is a lot on the table for him to appear in. We still don't know who bought Avengers Tower. I thought that was going to come up here. It didn't. Nope. There's so many little facets, even though Phase 4 is packed to the brand, there's so many little nooks and crannies where Kingpin can fit. Uh, and my third and I think final point is that, look, at the end of the day, when if you if you get hit point blank by a luxury car and then get mm. beat up by like a ninja girl and then get exploded by arrows and you still walk away, a little gun's not going to do jack. A little, little yeah. tiny little gun. A little gun. No, no, that gun is going to either, like you said, it's going to bounce off body armor he's wearing, or Mm -hmm. it's going to wound him to just put him out of commission long enough to explain, you know, oh, why didn't Kingpin cause trouble in She-Hulk or in Doctor Strange? Because he was in the hospital. Whatever. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's, It's going to do something just to get him out of the way for a bit. But I think it would be foolish foolish of the producers and writers and everybody to have access and of course this is coming from the biggest kingpin fan in the world so of course i'm biased here but to have access to this guy i want to believe right i want to believe this guy who everybody loved out of four netflix shows plus a fifth crossover show there were three characters that everybody was rapid for Daredevil, Punisher, and Fisk. Right? That's it. Yeah. So out of four and a half shows packed to the brim with characters, only three of those characters fans loved. And you have access to yeah. arguably the greatest one who fits the most with the rest of the world. And you're going to waste him in one episode? Absolutely not. If that's yeah. the choice that they made somebody is not somebody's making, getting fired <laughs> somebody's getting fired somebody's getting pearl muttered and yeah. oh, i yeah. i think that um i think that they they're so good at thinking long term now that yeah they would have this is essentially a cameo appearance to say more is coming just like mm-hmm certain other scenes we've seen lately 
Okay, so I, I love what you're saying. And, and I did want to bring up something here that I wanted to discover with you on this podcast mm -hmm. uh, on this very topic. So um, there's a site I follow and I, tr I trust this site a lot when it comes to rumors and stuff because they're usually spot on. Um, oh, 4chan, so, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, I follow a site called The Direct and for Marvel fans, this is your go-to site. Like, honestly, these guys, these guys do their homework and they will not put out anything without like good staggering evidence. Um, like Ooh. they won't, they, they won't put out an article that said like, oh yeah, someone posted it and read it and it like has no credibility whatsoever. These guys do the, do the homework, they do the digging and they, they'll like find insiders, they'll find all sorts of things. So um, there's no clickbait so, articles, right? There's no, there's no, no crazy bait articles. There's no like... Yeah. Hawkeye season six with like a thumbnail of She-Hulk and the, and the guy going like, <gasps> and then the article yeah. says She-Hulk did not appear in this episode, but you never know, right? Yeah, There's no yeah. clickbait BS like that. <laughs> All right, good. No, no, nothing like that. So they did an article on why Hawkeye's finale is a successful ending review. Uh, it mm -hmm. is written by Russ Milheim. Uh, and I'm going to go, I'm going to skip straight to the topic at hand. Uh, and it's Kingpin and his stepdaughter. And to quote it, quote, Vincent D'Onofrio's return as Kingpin was fantastic. It, and it's great to see the character return on screen. We are, we're all feeling this right now. Like, I oh, yeah. can totally relate to this feeling. So and far, so good, our, Russ. Exactly. Even better was how closer he is to the comic book's counterpart more than ever before, making it seem pretty clear that this is a slightly different rendition of Kingpin than what fans saw in Daredevil. The sheer power he showed while fighting Kate was staggering. It was a sight to behold. It goes the extra nine yards in demonstrating to the audience he is not an easy target. There's a reason he's in charge. While it was fantastic to see him fight one of the two leads in the series, can't help but wish he fought in a the actual Avenger, given how cool it was to hear that term uh, leave his lips earlier in the episode. Like we said, right? Mm -hmm. Loving it so far. Uh, Kate will be on that level day uh, one day. Uh, as <clears throat> as great as he was, though, it felt like the episode could have used more of him. Things we've been saying brought him in an episode or two earlier. Also, yeah. the fake also the fake out death cliffhanger is quite annoying, as everyone knows he's not dead. Now, this is the, this is why I'm confused, right? Because like I'm convinced that he's not, and you're convinced he's not. But they they left they left it this way, right? Marvel isn't going to bring back the character on screen for five minutes only to kill him off. The moment plays explicitly off a comic book panel where Maya is confronting him about her father's death. She goes to shoot him, and instead of killing him, he ends up blinding him. Needless to say, fans will see D'Onofrio again. Wait, in the comics, she blinds him. Uh, the moment plays explicitly off a comic panel where Maya is fronting him about her father's death. She goes to shoot him. Instead of shooting him, she ends up blinding him. That's right. Oh, man. I hope he doesn't go blind. Oh, I think it's temporary. I think he's temporarily blind. Okay. I just want Kingpin in full form. And we got like four seconds of that. And like, yeah, I really hope he's not blinded. Um, the actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I do remember the comic. Uh, there's a comic book reference, and yes, Echo does sh shoot him, and the bullet I think the bullet ricochets and it uh, it ends up, uh, yeah, just blinding him. Okay, like it's a, it's a confrontation, it's not as point blank as the episode made it look. All right, that's fair, and that again, that puts him out of commission for a bit mm -hmm. until the next time they need to use him. Uh, Russ brings up a good point too about the fight with Kate because the fight with Kate is just there's a move that he does that made me like scream because I was so enthralled by it and it was exactly like I feel like they took his sprite from the Sega Genesis game that I had where he's the last <laughs> boss yeah. and the sprite has like a, a thing where he punches Spider-Man and he like and he like does this thing and I can't describe it because I'm not a kingpin myself but when Kate shot that arrow and he grabbed that cord and pulled her and like punched her in midair, he was that sprite. And I was just like, oh, there he is. Yeah. 
Oh, he, yeah. He can it. lift her. She's a grown woman, and he lifted her off her feet like he was Scorpion get over hearing her mm-hmm. across the pit. And I, I was, that was probably my favorite part of the episode. Well, no, my favorite part of the episode was just seeing him in his real costume for the first time. It's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful episode. Like it's, it's the Kang episode. Like that's, that's my theory now is like, if they're going to do introduce a character like Kingpin, they're going to have a Kang episode and it's going to be everything you want, full of action, great appearances, and just wrapping up the story in, in a beautiful present gift wrap for you. And, and on the subject of fights, we, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's funny because it is a holiday themed episode. <laughs> It is. It's the it's the most holiday themed episode, in fact, because it's the closest they get. And then you see Christmas Day itself. Uh, on the subject of great fights, I think we'd be remiss not to talk about Kate versus Yelena. Mm-hmm. Um, the cinematography in that fight was gorgeous, Ryan. Just panning through those, it felt like you were looking through the houses of the Sims, and these two are just fighting fighting their way across Sim households, uh, and tearing each other through doorways and still being friends. And Kate had that great line of like, stop making me like you. And she's like, I can't help it. And I'm like, I know how you feel, Kate. I like her too. Uh, oh, it's it, so good. What a I, wonderful I love that pairing. scene. I, it, it is a wonderful pairing. I love that scene. It is the whole, the whole scene at the Rockefeller uh, is so good. It is, it, it's perfect. And I love the kind of spy feel when they're all like in, Cognito dressed, and then the reveal of her, like, oh, did you plan that? The like, <laughs> like it's perfect. Um, it was such a comic book experience. It's it was so good, uh, and it was so much fun. Oh my god, it was so much fun. I love the. I it wasn't necessary, but I love the face dragging across the window with Kate there. My oh, only yeah. thing there though is like Yelena must really like her. And I'm just talking, and like, you know, before anyone goes like, oh, yeah. I'm talking like just respect and like her, period. Like, but like must really have some ad- like real admiration for her because as a widow, if that target is being blocked by an obstacle, you get rid of the obstacle. Like you, yeah. you don't waste time like that. So there's got to be something to that story. Like she, or she just realized she's, she's not a bad person. So she's not going to kill innocent people. She needs to kill her target. So I, I I kind of danced with that as they were fighting each other, but like at the same time, I was like, you know what? It's just a damn good fight scene, and it was fun, man. And then we get, and also, you know, we'd be remiss not to talk about the wonderful hero montage of them building the arrows. I I mm. needed that personally. I I needed all, all all that scene. But yeah, getting back to the fight with the the trust of bros, the tracksuit mafia, and the ice rink. Oh my god, just every second of that and it's funny how there's a shot where they slow down and kind of pan around them and it's it kind of felt like age of ultron a little bit did you kind of get that as well or they're just like and and if you're again if you're listening to this via podcast i'm I'm mimicking the movements making noises as i'm doing it but like he's actually he actually got a bow and arrow folks ryan got a bow and arrow and he he turned his webcam around in a circle to emulate the show and he did it flawlessly. <laughs> but it, it was a nice kind of homage to Hawkeye as a character. And, and it was fun to see the kind of recreate a hilarious nod to the Age of Ultron experience. Yeah, I got a lot of Ultron vibes from that. I also got a lot of Legolas vibes from Kate when she's sliding on the ice and just taking down oh, tracksuits. Oh, the knee slide was so yeah. cool. She totally Lego. I can just see Orlando Bloom watching this mm-hmm. show and being like, hey, that's my move. Um, I don't know why I made him Scottish. She's not Scottish. I'm sorry, Orlando. Uh, you're right about Yelena liking Kate because I was at the beginning of that fight before it kind of escalated to a fight. I was really tense the whole time because Kate kept getting in her way and, you know, just staying in the door. And I'm like, girl, she's a widow. What are you doing? Like, she's going to hurt you. And the fact that Yelena, you know, steamrolled past her without killing her, like you said, that's a big deal. Uh, she even tells her last week and during their ladies night, like, don't get in my way, please. And thank you. Uh, so that was the first half of that fight was just me saying, like, Kate, Kate get out of her way, please. She's going to hurt you. And the second half was just like, this is a great fight. And these two are so fun together. I'm calling it right now. This is 
the best unexpected friendship in the MCU since Falcon and Bucky. Ooh, wow, you went the distance on that. These guys, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a spinoff. Based on the that Bishop category, and the Widow. Based on that category, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Based on already based on the criteria of how you're setting this up, I agree with it. Uh, because they do jive. They jive really well. And I, I really like it. I actually there's like if it actually genuinely brings a smile out of me, like it, like kind of like you know it's corny, but you're really enjoying it. That's mm-hmm. that means there's some really good chemistry there. And and there is. Um, I think I hope we see like a young Avengers experience where the, those two are together and spending a lot of time together. I think it would be hilarious. Or hopefully they call it like um, youngish Avengers because they're they're young. not that young. Yeah. No, but the Young Avengers is obviously. Come on, man! Don't make me explain it. Don't, don't make me do it. Oh, I know the Young Avengers. They think they're so cool. <laughs> then, they, then they start civil war. It's 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 in terms of experience, right? They're yeah. On the resume, they're a little lower on the uh, the job experience than some other, you know, major players. I don't know, like Captain America. <laughs> man fought in World War Two for crying out loud. Well, he's he earned his dance. He's busy dancing now. He's an old Avenger. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they should call them New Avengers. Or yeah, I, I feel like New sounds. I don't know. Young Avengers sounds like Little Archie. That's what I think of when I hear that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like Hulk is in a diaper and he's like, I'm going to smash now. That's what I think of when I hear Young Avengers. Um, <laughs> yes, I love Kate and Yelena. I love their whole thing together. I love this whole fight. I love the Legolas stuff. Hey, bro, it's Kate the Bishop. Tracksuit Mafia. They are just beautiful dudes. There's so many of them. Why are yes. there so many? Um, you oh, know what they reminded me of, Ryan? The, mm. When they started running out onto the ice, and some of them are in red and some of them are in green, it reminded me of like a like a Super Nintendo beat 'em up game, like Maximum Carnage, where you have like the same bad guy coming after you, and then like they just change the color of his trench coat. Like one is in blue, one's in pink. Yeah. That's what it looked <laughs> like to me. And the fact that they're just hammering on all of them, and it's like street level. I'm like, somebody's been playing Super Nintendo. Uh, Bert and Bertie, they fired up the SNES before they came and shot mm-hmm. today. Um, uh, I that whole fight scene is just beautiful. The the tree at Rockefeller Plaza is, as always, beautiful and giant, and the, the colors. It's everything I wanted in a Christmas Marvel scene. And they did they did one of the comedic techniques that I really enjoy when it's done right is the why is the rum gone joke when it's done twice. It's done twice. It's funny. Three times, you just got to stop. But they did it, and I loved it because the guy comes in. He's like, oh, you know, I got the tickets for Maroon 5, and you know, it really helped us. Like, that, to me, was priceless. Like, I thought that was so funny. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing, though, I didn't get was the owl reference. I thought that was so weird. The was owl was like, odd. Why is the owl there? <laughs> That's going to be your version of why is the rum gone. <laughs> Yeah. You're going to be like, why is the owl there? Uh, and then next time there's another Disney Plus show, you're going to be like, why is the owl not there? Um, well, what bothers me, though, is Kate shoots the arrow and cuts down the tree. Does that mean the owl's dead? Like, I'm pretty sure the owl didn't get out of that. Well, yeah, because he, he got away and he picked up the, the shrunken guys and ate them. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess they needed the, I guess that's why the scene happened there because they needed the explanation why the owl comes and picks up the little truck. No, that would have been, I think it would have been even funnier if like a random owl, like if we had never seen the owl before and then yeah. he just randomly comes in or a pigeon just randomly comes in and picks up the truck. I think that would have been much funnier because it's like, Oh my God, where did that bird come from? Yeah. And <laughs> they brought up a good point. Because Kate's like, like, what happened to those guys? And Clint's like, honestly, I don't know. What does happen, Ryan, if you get shrunk without wearing a pimp suit? Do you you're, just turn into stuck, that guy stuck. from? You're stuck. That's it. You're stuck as you're stuck as uh, a shrunken person until you, uh, until you get the the reverse formula, the giant formula. Uh, because here's the thing: in the comics, when Ant Man first does his shrinking formula thing, he's stuck. He's stuck like that, and you spend the first few issues. 
uh, of him trying to navigate him recreating the formula so he can grow back. Oh, wow. Well, those guys... Yeah, it's bad, they're, it's they're a bad either, spot to be in. Oh, bad spot to be in. It's terrifying. They're either living it up in a, in a nest somewhere high above New York, or they're just dead and they're being barfed up by owls as we speak. Oh, yeah. Uh, total regurgitation. That, is, uh, that, that was a great little moment. Uh, so many fun little moments in this fight. And I think one of the fun moments that can't be overlooked is the fact that Jack decided to just bring a full-on rapier to the party with him. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. It was, you know, it's perfect, too, because he is kind of an anti-hero type-ish character. So, you know, right there for me, I was like, yep, we got my, we got the swordsman. Check. You know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. the, le- the leaper, right? Like, we got got the character. Check. And we got to see the character in action. Check. Like, so there you go. You got swordsman, you know? And it, it's so case-closed. But... Um, but I love seeing him do it. Like, it was just fun to watch him. And I love how, because <laughs> these characters in the comics, they do walk around sometimes with all their, you know, regalia and, and yeah. all their stuff. I, and it was funny to see him. I love that they even comment on him. They're like, he comes in with the sword and he's been, he's been accused of murder with the sword. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, that was perfect. Yeah, that was a bold choice. I don't think I could ever enter a party with a weapon that um, visible. You know, I like mm-hmm. to conceal my implements of death, but he just wears it on his hip just the same way he wears his heart on his sleeve. I like that he kind of turned out to be a decent guy. I thought that was because he was getting so likable throughout the show. It's just like, man, I love this dude. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of glad he's a he's a good guy. Um, Evelyn, on the other hand, is exactly what we thought she was. Mm-hmm. And the fact that she guilt trips her daughter and is like, is this what heroes do? have their mothers arrested on christmas it's like yeah well maybe you don't uh, murder people and uh, uh, it's uh you know it's yeah. her own fault and uh, i think that whole line about like is this what heroes do it's a nice little callback because kate i wanted to bring up what kate says to hawkeye because i think it's so important i think it sums up stan lee's early idea of marvel in general it's that being a hero has nothing to do with what superpowers you have. It has nothing to do with what costume you're wearing. It has to do with, do you constantly do the right thing even when it means you're sacrificing something to do it? And when she tells that to Hawkeye, I'm just like, that's Marvel right there. That's the whole spiel. And that's why seeing Hawkeye, as she says, take on those aliens with just a stick and a string that influenced her to be what she needed to be to do the same thing. And on her first sort of official night, she fights the Kingpin. Like that's, that's a big deal. That's epic, man. You know, and, and one thing I got to give props to as well is you got to imagine like, like Haley, like to be fair, Haley's got a little more acting experience, but uh, Aliqua um, first acting role, very first acting role out of the wow. game first acting role she never never done acting never even wanted to be an actor believe it or not and uh and here she is in a show with you know with actors like um jeremy renner who did the hurt locker which was uh i think it was an award-winning film um and then and then on top of that you get you know this new up-and-coming actor Haley, who's like blowing up faster than ever and and then on top of that, she has to stand next to Vincent D'Onofrio in a scene. Like, that is that is groundbreaking. But as a director, though, I think that's really interesting casting because it really gives to scale, you know, when you have, like, a, a new actor and you have someone like Vincent in, a, in the camera scene together. Like, like, that, you don't even need to direct anything in that scene. You're just no. like, here are your lines go and then like vincent just like being the the ominous presence that is kingpin like oh man i i don't even have to re i don't even have to act i just have to react to whatever he does because like it's just so insanely good it's so textbook it's it's amazing yeah should be like whatever vincent is doing in the scene with me he will be scary i don't have to go through the process of acting scared yeah um good for her that's great like she 
talk about a great first role, right? Like she's already got mm-hmm. a spinoff. Like what a what a great already way got, to kick off a career. Already got a spinoff. Great backstory. Great scenes. Um, and and not only that, she gets her comic book outfit right at the end. Ooh, is it the with the motorcycle jumpsuit thing? Uh, well, the leather jacket. It's not. It's not really part of her number, but like the the last outfit she wore was just kind of like the tank top, the the belt with the guns and the leather pants. That's that's her outfit. Okay, all right. Wow, look at that! She's got her costume already. Um, speaking of the motorcycle costume, mm-hmm. I wanted to bring up something because in that scene where she confronts, um, why do I always blank on his name? Once per episode, I blank on his name. Kaji, Kazi. Oh, Kazi, yeah. Kazi, yeah. When she confronts him, he says to her, you know, because she's like, I was hoping you could run away with me. And he says, I can't walk in both worlds. And I don't know about you, Ryan, but that made me just think of Ghost Rider. Oh. (laughs) Because I'm the only one who can walk in both worlds. Uh So maybe he's showing up. Maybe he's her friend now. And he's like, Echo, Mm -hmm. we got to go do some things in in New York City. We got to run away. And oh yeah that's the uh, next I mean, show i i want ghost right you know speaking of next shows like i i'm a little shocked in realizing that we have to like we have to like freaking may to like the next marvel project that's a long time it is like a is long that time. is that marvel's break like is that like are they or like by break i mean like are they just like going off social media for a while and just like focusing on stuff and and, and having a nice work-life balance Maybe. I mean, the past six months have been crazy for them. Six months, mm-hmm. you've gotten Loki, you've gotten Black Widow, you've gotten What If, you've gotten Eternals, you've gotten Shang-Chi, you've gotten Spider-Man, and you've gotten Hawkeye. Like, it's... I, I would not be surprised at all if they were uh, taking a little break, because I think they've kind of earned it. Ooh, you just sent me an image of Echo and Kingpin. Oh, boy. Ooh! Wow, Echo's all torn up. And Kingpin's got slime on him like he just fought mm-hmm. one of the Ghostbusters. I'm going to try to hold it up to the screen so people watching the video can see. Look at that. That's my boy, Big Willie. And that's Echo. And she's just like, oh, I got a gun. And you don't. But he's mm-hmm. totally wearing body armor because that's what he does. And, um, and the line is, we have to work together. Uh, Maya, we need each other. Oh, hold on. You read it in his voice, sir. Come on. Okay. okay. I, I, I could do it when it's like... It's like... We have to work together, Maya. We need each other. <laughs> like, no, like you know, like, uh, like, oh man, I think my favorite, my favorite line from Kingpin was like, "You embarrass me in front of her." Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> oh, and the headbutts just, uh, 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 oh, so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think I just so good, so good. This episode was everything and at this point marvel is and you know i I was thinking about it and i think the kind of note i want to like start ending on here is like you bought these comics so long ago like you buy these comics and you look at these characters you buy the cards and you buy whatever and you look at this and like to see it come to life and be so well represented is like the best one of the best investments as like a fan as a fan that's a great way to put it man it it, that's what it is right like you you see that you see it theatrically playing in your head as you're like reading the comics or looking at the character and kind of imagining your own stories within these characters but the investment pays off after after so long of like the technology's there the storytelling's there and we see these characters come to life and it's just such a beautiful moment and it's and to get Kingpin, and you know what? I, I, I here I am worried that like Kingpin's not coming back, and I, you know I really should put that to rest because I just realized that this is a comic book direct reference. Um, so clearly they're going to keep using. They have to. They have to keep using the guy. Um, so, so yeah, like it's just such a beautiful. Th- it's a beautiful thing, and you said it best too. Like you know, it's, they really captured one of Stan Lee's moments, and and, and especially in in MCU storytelling is like. You know, what it means to be a hero is to always constantly make that the right choice and always be doing that that choice. And that's, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. 
It is beautiful. And as we all know, the right choice is, of course, marrying Linda Cardellini, um, <laughs> who apparently was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and that was her Rolex. So interesting. So she can kick some butt too. I like where this is going. Uh, Ryan, as we wrap this up here, is is there anything uh, is there anything next before Doctor Strange, or are we looking at an, a long, relaxing sort of vacation? MC MCU wise, I think we're uh, we're on a bit of a hiatus. I'm not gonna lie. That's uh, all right. And that's all right. I, I might have some ideas for us. I don't know if we'll be able to produce on a weekly basis, but I might have some ideas for us to for recording basis wise. Um, so you guys will still get, of course, you guys will get content from us. I mean, as, as long as there's MCU shows, we'll, we'll always be uh, within your shot away. Right. So um, uh, we may get a surprise like Moon Knight comes out February, like could come out February or even She-Hulk. We don't know. The fact yeah. that they came out with some form of trailer at this point could mean that they're well on their way of finishing. So, yeah. But, I mean, we do have Morbius coming out, and that has some MCU-ish moments that uh, have been shown in the trailers. So that's going to be interesting. But, uh, yes, my friend, I think that's, uh, for us, that's, uh, that's what's going on right now. Um uh, and of course, I mean, you know, Disney Plus has got a plethora of shows coming. Plethora. Uh, we got a long way to go. But uh, but that being said, I don't know. It feels like we have a bit of a hiatus uh, by the looks of things. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, good news on the on the website front, though, is that the Doctor Strange trailer came out. Uh, so if you want to see the Doctor Strange trailer, you definitely should check it out. If you haven't seen a certain movie of recent i'm not even gonna say it's a spoiler because it's not anymore if it's out via trailer but definitely check out this trailer it looks really cool if i'm hoping that this is like army of darkness level storytelling like i am i am hoping rami delivers a a real army of darkness feel because if he does this is gonna be best doctor strange experience we're ever gonna see um some really cool spell casting in there. And then finally, I'm going to wrap it up by saying, uh, I actually think it was nice to see uh, a nice little what if reference uh, finally pay off because I was really worried about that show. <laughs> yeah. What if is getting some love uh, mm-hmm. so much so that uh, I think next season, instead of ending with a dot, 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 it should end with just an exclamation point. Be like, what if huh? <laughs> we told you it was important. Yeah. Um, yeah, I that's actually a... think I actually think that that's uh, that's nightmare. Hey, the, I would be okay character. with that. I, I would think be okay with that. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, uh, it's a great little trailer. Check it out now. Um, even though that movie's five months away, it's okay. I'm looking forward to it. I think we have maybe She Hulk between then and now. If not, mm-hmm. I understand. But you're right, Ryan. We do have more coming here with us with Infinity Rewatch. We have, of course, our holiday special ranking the MCU, which is coming. Uh, we can't tell you when yet, but it is coming very soon. In, as we are in the holiday season, you will be getting it. Uh, then we have, uh, obviously, our No Way Home rewatch, which we promised we would do at some point. Ryan's got some ideas. I've got one idea that I think would would make a really cool episode. So there's there's going to be stuff between then and now from us, even if there's no stuff between them and now from Kevin, uh, because he's busy killing off the Kingpin. No, he's not because he's a smart man. Ryan, you're a smart man. Where can people find you to ask you questions and you can answer them like you're a human magic eight ball. As always, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Xbox Canada. Uh, And then of course you can find me on Twitter at crusader online. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram, just posting fun social stuff uh, at Ryan J. Whitehead at live.ca. And you can find me on all those things except Twitch, because I'm not there, uh, at Andrew Fantasia, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Uh, and on my YouTube channel, I just put up a, a video essay about Ghostbusters Afterlife, so check that out. Uh, it's my newest video essay. And then on top of that, we have, of course, Rebels Come Podcast Network, where we'll be talking about Book of Boba Fett, because Ryan... He's just a simple man trying to make his way in the universe. And now he's on the sands of Tatooine, taking over Jabba the Hutt's palace. 
Uh, that's my best Tamara Morrison. I'm sorry. I met the man, but I can't do better than that. Uh, but anyway, that has been Infinity Rewatch. That has been Hawkeye. That has been Kingpin. And that has been us. Until next time, everybody, please have a marvelous day and a merry Fiskmas. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.